Remember, as far as anybody knows, we're a normal church. So let's just, you know. Okay, guys. Acts chapter 9. We're talking about the Acts of Apostles. And we've, I spent a lot of time on this this week, which is scary. The, it, okay. I went back and I got pretty stirred up over point number one, which is Paul, they began to preach Jesus. And what happens when you preach Jesus? It riles up folks. It riles up the enemy. It riles up. It, I mean, things begin to happen. And here in this church, we have decided that we are going to preach Jesus and, and Jesus and his grace and his mercy and his love and it stirred up some good stuff. It stirred up some interesting things. It's done some things. But here's the deal, guys. Is Jesus the answer? Yes. Or is it my intellect? Because we're in trouble. Just full disclosure. Okay. And they plotted to kill him. And the reason they were unable to was because of his brothers and sisters. Now, we know God had his hand in that. But they had to lower him over a wall in a basket. Okay, I hope it was a big basket. But anyway, but the point being is because of his brothers and sisters, they were unable to do that. They plotted to kill him, and they did it again. And, you know, and then in 34, it's they had the tragedy of the lady that just died. But listen, then God raised her from the dead. Okay, Peter came and prayed for her and she was risen from the dead. And the, the end result of that point was, was this, that we have people around us that are dead in their trespasses. They are dead. They are miserable. They are dead in addiction. They're dead in pain, suffering, mental illness. And I want to tell you something, guys. God is the answer for that. And now we are to this week, which is a... Interesting story. Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. A devout man. Now what he would have been would be a convert to Judaism. Okay, he, I guess he could have started out as a little Jewish boy, but he was, this would not be, when they say devout, there's not talking about a Christian because Christianity at that point was a Jewish cult. Okay, just a small division of, of Judaism. So he's a devout man. He feared God with all his household who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. But he was this weird thing, this weird thing called a Gentile, okay? And I want to tell you, Gentiles in the, were not the chosen people. They weren't the chosen people. They, they were over here. They were not God's elect, okay? Up until this point, now to, for a Gentile to become a Jew, what they what they go through a ceremony. They would be circumcised. The males would be circumcised, and then they would actually there was actually a baptism ceremony. Okay, and uh, I've read about all this, and so that could have happened to him because it says he's given alms, he's given all that. So, but he's still a Gentile. Okay, so he's a. In about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision, okay, he, gave, he, he, he feared God with all his household. He gave generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. Now, this was so important at this point. This was such a, it would be like you, us going south. Okay, and we're going to Little Rock, Arkansas. It's about, uh, I don't know, 200 miles from here south. And we're going due south. And what would turn us around? 
Okay, somebody's saying, well, you know, that's not a good place to go. You know, we're gonna go in and we got business down there. We got things to do. We got need to get down there. And, but what would turn us around, make a stop would be a catastrophic or something that gets our attention so much to the point, it's like, oh, we can't, we can't go. Okay. So it took more than just somebody talking to him. Okay. And you remember what happened with, um, Saul, he couldn't just be convinced by a person. What happened is he got knocked off his donkey and blinded. And I want to tell you, getting knocked off your donkey and, and where you can't see it, you hear a voice where, and, and, it's, and he says, Jesus, that might get your attention, right? Okay. So this guy says, has this vision. He says, he says, what is it, Lord? And he said, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon the Tanner. So we don't mean Simon the Tanner. We mean Simon, his name is Peter. Okay. But he stayed with the other Simon. That's not complicated at all. Don't worry about that. Okay. And he will tell you what you must do. And when the angel spoke to him at the party, Cornelius called two of his household servants a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. And when he explained all of these things, he sent them to Joppa. So I want you to think about life for a minute. You've got this guy who is obviously a big deal. I mean, he's got servants. He's a centurion. That means he's over a hundred at least soldiers. He's got a family. He's got a he's a big deal. He's a big deal enough that he's sending people to do things for him. And but think about all that had to happen in his life to get him to this place in his life. Because the average Gentile was not giving alms, praying, doing those things. How did he, now it's not covered in the text, but how did he get from here to there? I don't know, it might have been a hard journey, it might have been an easy journey, I don't know. Okay. But God has picked someone and has literally, God has picked someone, chosen, selected, preordained from the foundation of the earth to line up, to literally line up to be to make this huge change, because there's going to be a shift here, a huge shift. So, he says these words. He explained to him, and he said on the job. And the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and wanted to eat, but while they made it ready, he fell into a trance. They don't use the word trance much in the Bible, okay? He saw heaven open up and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let him down to the earth. And it was all kind of four-footed animals on the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him and says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now this is in red if you have a red edition Bible. This are the words of Jesus. He is saying, hey, this was the law and now we are going to grace. Now that's not the words that are in there. He's saying, all who are thirsty. You remember on the last day of the feast, he stands up and says, is anybody in here thirsty? He didn't say the people had it together, the people that don't have it together, the women, the men. He didn't say those of you who don't have um, problems in your life. He said, anybody who's thirsty. You remember those words? And, but Peter said, no, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean because he was living, he was do, he was following, listen to these words, he was following the law. Now, guys, I want to tell you, you have to be so careful as you pick through this because you can't take, just say, I'll just do whatever I want to. I'm saved, I can do whatever I want to. I'm going to tell you something. That's like me saying, I got a driver's license. 
I'm just going to drive on the left-hand side of the road because I've always wanted to be in England anyway. Does that cause a little confusion? Does that cause stuff broke? Does that cause accidents? Does that cause pain to people? Do you care about me? Do you care about me? Yes. Well, if I'm coming up this way and I'm on, on my side of the road, you say, well, I, I want to be British and I'm going to ride on the left-hand side of the road. And you go over there and you run into me. How much do you... Do you, or do you care more about yourself or do you care about others? You're, you're worried about yourself because it's all about me. And that's what happens. You have to be so careful with these scriptures because I want to tell you, it matters what I do. There's a bunch of things that I could do and go to heaven. But I'm going to tell you something. I ain't going to do it. You know why? Because I care about you. Because I want you to be with me. And I want your, your offspring, I want people behind you to be with me. I care about that. And I want to tell you something. The reason I do is not because I'm a good person. It's because God has shown me that he died on the cross for you. And he loves you. And so I love you. And I love this generation. And the voice spoke to him the second time. What God has cleansed you must not call common and it was done three times now remember what th the number three is, uh, is the number of finished remember three days in the grave and he rose you right okay i mean listen and he did it three times the law has been finished you and listen watch what you eat when you go get your cholesterol checked it matters okay i'm no i'm, I'm just Use comments. Watch what you put in your body. Watch what you do. Watch what you put in your mind. Watch what you put in your spirit. What? Be careful because it all has fruit. It all grows. It all does things. But listen, he's saying what God has cleansed, you must not call common. While Peter wondered what this even means, and that's my words, that's not the King James. Men who sent from Cornelius showed up in the inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter, through the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, go down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Did God do this? Is that what the Word of God says? Did God do this? And I want to tell you something. People will put people in your life and you think, what? Really? Okay. But God knows what he's doing. And Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius. And he said, yes, I am him who you seek. What reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man who fears God and has a good reputation among the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. And he invited him in and lodged with them. The next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. He took some brothers with him, which is never a bad idea. Don't know what you're getting into. Now, I want you to think about this. Cornelius, the name means, now this is going to be a little iffy for some of y'all. It's okay. If you don't like it, throw it out. But I like it. Cornelius means War horn. Okay. It is a horn in those days was something that you put things in. You put oil in. You put, and I'm going to tell you something. Cornelius, his very name means he's fixed to stir it up. Okay. What happened right here stirred the church up. It stirred the, the whole situation up. Okay. And his name means that. Okay, now up until this time, and I'm going to be very generic so we can keep moving forward, okay, because you know if I get stalled, we'll be here a month, okay, but here's the deal, okay, at that time in Judaism, you couldn't be around no Greeks, you couldn't be around no Samaritans, you couldn't be around nobody with leprosy, you couldn't be around no women, you couldn't be, right, is that right? Okay, and I don't mean you could be around your family, but it was a very strict division, you know, and, and if a woman happened to be on, on her cycle or whatever, it puts everything in a whole other, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Okay, so all of those 
And some of you are not going to like this. It's okay. Seriously. We can disagree. But I want to tell you something. God had a purpose for that. Because God was dealing with trying very hard to keep the Jewish people, the race as pure as he could keep it, because the seed of rightness was going to come out of, is this right? The seed of Jesus, the seed of righteousness was going to come out of the tribe of Judah, through, right? And they, and they didn't need to bury this person. Bury them. Anyway, but the point being is this, okay? And there were, there were practical reasons for not eating pork with worms in it. There was practical, right? Okay. You still have to cook it good. Okay, but I like a little hog every once in a while. But you know, I had pulled, I don't know, whatever. Okay. That was a food reference. So here's the deal. And literally, and the following day they entered Caesarea and Cornelius was waiting for them and called them together with his relatives and close friends. So he's not just with one Gentile. He's not just with four Gentiles. He's with a whole church of Gentiles. Okay. Well, it wasn't a church yet. Okay. But it's fixed to be. And Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now, the reason he did is not because that he was wanting to do something wrong. He was ignorant. He didn't know what he was getting into. He was like, listen, God told me to call you. Are you an, I mean, you're an angel. Are you a, what are you? I mean, what's going on? He was ignorant. How many of y'all ever been ignorant of what was going on? Yeah. Listen, I've done some stupid stuff, yeah. you know, and not, not as much as I used to. Okay. But I was driven. I was misinformed. I was right. Okay. Did Paul do some stupid stuff? He was arresting the people that had the truth. Right? And that's why I let me and Paul get along so well. <laughs> people always fussed about Paul. I love Paul. So he's ignorant, but Paul lifted him up saying, stand up. Hey, I'm a man. You don't need to worship me. I'm a man. And I love it when Paul says, he goes on, on further later on as he's writing one of his letters. He says, you know, the things that I really want to do, I don't do so well. Okay. The things I don't want to do, sometimes I do them. How irritating. Okay. Is that what he says? Okay. So anybody else ever been right there? Oh, I live there. Okay. So when Peter is coming in, uh, he fell down at his feet. He lifted him up. I'm a man. And as he talked with him, he went and found many who had come together. And he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company or to go to one of, of another nation. But God. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have anything without you, God. We have no knowledge. We have, it's only by the spirit that we learn anything, God. I learned from God that I should not call any man common or unclean. And I'm going to pause right there because I'm stirred up. And uh, I just am. We have lost an entire generation because we have called them unclean. And I want to tell you something. I, I think it's going to be interesting. <laughs> When we're standing before the Lord and we know we find out his priorities versus our priorities, the priorities that we were taught, the priorities that, that and therefore I came without objection as soon as I was sent for, I asked them for what reason have you sent me? And Cornelius says, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour and the ninth hour I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and he said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of the Lord. Therefore, to Joppa and Simon here, whose surname is Peter, he is lodging in the house of Simon, the tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we're all present before God to hear the things commanded to you by God. Now, you know, this is the guy. I'm not saying this be, you know this. This is the guy that could have started in Genesis 1 and explained the whole, 
He has studied under the huge teachers of the law. He could have went down every rabbit hole in the world. He, I mean, this guy, he, he is trained, trained, and trained. Okay, so look what happens. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Okay. The whole nation's divided about his vote for him. The whole nation is divided about every kind of political, who do whatever, all this, all everything in the world. Everybody, the enemy has come in and divided his body every direction that you can divide it. Okay, but I want you to hear what I'm saying this morning. Every, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word of God which sent the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Okay. And here we go. He goes and tells the story of Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power and went about doing good and healing for all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews in Jerusalem and who they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before him by God, even those who ate and drank with him as he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Is Jesus Lord? Yes. To him, all the prophets witness through him his name. Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. So let me ask you a question. Jesus says it, Paul says it, they all agree on it. Why can't we agree on it? What saves folks? Jesus, believing, receiving, coveting, covenanting. That's, is that even a word? Going into covenant with, how's that? I'll just do it like that, I'll back it up. With Christianity. And be good, please. I, I always throw that in, you know, because I'm, I want y'all to stop at a liquor store and went home. So, anyway. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. Okay. So, I want to tell you guys. I think it's kind of funny that we stand at the gate and tell people who can come in and be saved. I want you to think about that. That ain't my job. <laughs> and every time that I've done something that I'm not anointed to, I make a mess at it. And every time I do something, okay, let's say that you had a, a large, uh, is Lawrence truck a diesel? His pickup, yeah it is, his pickup. Let's say something, he had a little tick in his motor in that nice red truck. And he said, Bruce, would you come over here and look at this and see what you think? You know why he'll never do that? Oh, wait, Lauren's watching. Hi. Um, here's, here's the deal. You know why he won't do that? Because he knows I don't know nothing about it. And I don't need to be touching it. I could probably put the hose in the right place and, you know, I might could check the oil, maybe. Uh, if I got something to stand on to get down in it. But the point being, you, I don't mess with it because I don't know nothing about it. And I want to tell you something. When Jesus dies for somebody, do you think I'm going to say, no, no, you can't be saved? How ignorant is that? How, how arrogant is that? Okay. So that's why God's called me to take, have you guys ever seen like a boot stretcher? You ever seen a, how about a hat stretcher? That would be something more I would need. Okay. Um, I uh, was praying right around the front here 20 years ago. And I saw a boot stretcher in this church. Except it reached from that wall to that wall. 
and it was going like this because, and I don't mean grow for numbers, I'm talking about grow that we can say, you know what, come in here and receive Christ. If you're breathing, we want you in here. If you're not breathing, we'll give you a nice ceremony, okay? You know, a fairly nice ceremony, okay? But anyway, but the point being exists, guys. That's what he was saying. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. For he heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. That's why... Forty years ago, I was in the bathroom. Y'all say, "Oh, that's not going to be a good story." No, that's that's where my that was my prayer room at the little farmhouse we used to have because it was warm. I had a little heater in there, and that's where I prayed. And I was fasting and praying. And guys, I'll never forget it. I begin to see baptisms of people of all shapes and sizes, of all, of, and, and it's like, what, what do you, what, what? And it's like, I said, God, it's literally like God was saying, hey, don't be culling people. You know what cull means? It's like the pretty tomatoes go in this place, down in Bradley County, when the tomatoes, they pick tomatoes, they put them on this line, you put the ugly ones over here, they make uh, tomato sauce, and you put the pretty ones here, they get shined up and put in a basket to be sold at the grocery stores. Does that make sense? And we call people. We, well, you know, that person that had this problem, this person got that problem, this person. Got, and you know what? God don't call people. He says, all who are thirsty, anybody who's hungry, come. And guys, we have, we have, done that to the point that the church has a bad reputation. I don't mean this church because we're perfect, not unlike all those others. Okay. But guess what? No Greeks, no Samaritans. No, anybody with leprosy. Oh no. Oh no. You know. But here's the deal. What Paul is saying is that does not transfer to Christianity. That was the Jewish law. And I want to tell you two things. Um, you have to be careful with this, what I'm going to say, because all of us struggle in different places. Okay. When I first, um, many, many years ago, I went to my pastor. I was actually working in church. And uh, I went to him and I said, you know, I like, I like being associate. I like it. I like being, you know, uh, I get time to study. I get time to pray. But I just, I'm just not around enough sinners. I just need, I mean, I don't mean that, you know, because as being in the marketplace before that, I was around folks all the time, either putting them in jail or, or whatever. And we talked about it. And I began to hang out at the liquor store. Uh, not every day. Okay, I'd go in there and get me a Diet Coke and stand around. And you wouldn't believe the talks that I had at the liquor store. Now, I'm not telling you to go to the liquor store. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is sometimes we try to build castles around our culture and we don't have anything to give people in the marketplace. And uh, guys, I want to tell you, through the years, God has used me in some odd places. And... You just, you got to know what you're doing and, and it helps to have people with you to hold you accountable, all those things. But I want to tell you, verse 11 is, in the, is or chapter 11 is where we're going to go now and then we'll close, okay? Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard the Gentiles had received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem of the circumcision, they contended with him. Now listen to these words. You went into the uncircumcised men and ate with them, but Peter explained to them 
in order from the beginning saying, and he told a whole story about he saw the vision, he saw these things, the voice from God, and he didn't want to do it <laughs> because it didn't fit his comfort zone. I get that. Sometimes things make me uncomfortable. There's some things that happened recently that have made me uncomfortable. But guess what? I got over it. I got over it. Bless my heart. You know? Sometimes I think we're so worried about being comfortable that we forget that this is... Uh, I remember uh, sitting in the bushes uh, many years ago uh, with rifles being paid to uh, do something. We'll get into that. But it was not comfortable. There was ticks, skeeters, uh, but I was making a bunch of money. I'm sure maybe $10 an hour. But anyway, but the point being is it was not comfortable, but I was there on a, what's this? A mission. I was on a mission. We were there. I was assigned there. I was doing that. It was uncomfortable. When you got time to eat, you got in your pocket and you got some Skittles or, you know, whatever you was eating. I was out laying out there for eight, 10, 12 hours waiting on was watching the crown. Okay, never mind. But the point being, it was not comfortable. But that was my job. What do you think I did? When he said, go into the world, preach the gospel to every living creature, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You think that, did we think that was going to be comfortable? Did we think we were going to have, it was all going to be comfortable. They were just going to come to church. They'd already have all their little, little, little problems straightened out. And they'd all come in. And, did we, is that what we thought? Well, that's, that's religion. But it ain't, it, it, that ain't life. Anybody else ever had a problem or two? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love David Dillard. He's, he's in heaven right this minute. He's a Baptist pastor in South Arkansas. And I was working undercover narcotics. And I was a mess. And, and we just quit going to church. We just been hurt so bad. And Kim was working as a social worker. And she came home one day and said, Bruce, I think I found somebody I could. I could go to their church. And I go, well, okay, let's go. We went, we had three kids hollering, screaming, squirming, and, and uh, I looked like a woolly booger. And uh, we, uh, we sat back there and he talked about the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And then came to our house and said, we want you to come. I said, well, you know, there's a lot going on with me. There's a lot going on with us. He said, no matter to me. He said, we just raised Pentecost. He said, I don't care. <laughs> you know, he said, my, some of my best prayer partners are Pentecost. I was like, okay. okay. But it was, it was hilarious. And that year with him, that time there with him, matured me as a believer in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And I don't know that I could have gone to the next level without him being there for me at that time. And guys, I want to be that for folks. And these folks are, these people are fussing at him, but he told them, and here's the deal. God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And who am I to withstand God? And who am I to go against the word of God and say, you know, Galatians chapter three, and this is the last one we're going to read, maybe. Where's it at? I know it's in here somewhere. There it is. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before eyes Jesus clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Did you receive the Holy Spirit by the law? Did you, are, are, have you become saved because you're so good? I doubt it. Okay. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now made, being perfect by what you do in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? Was it in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed in God and it was counted to him as righteousness. That's one of the requirements when I baptize people. They have to say it out loud. Is Jesus the son of God? Did he die on the cross? I want them to hear it out of their mouth. Because I want to tell you something, guys. It ain't what you've done. And be good. How many times have I said that? This 
several, okay? And here's the deal. Only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the nations. Do you see that? The nations by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations will be blessed. And so those who are of faith are blessed with believing in Abraham. As many of you are the works of the law are under the curse. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the law to do them. In other words, you can't do half of it. You do half of it and you're cursed. You do a little bit of it and you judge me for doing a little bit that I ain't doing. And then you're cursed. You get that, right? And I don't want to curse. I want to be, how many of y'all want to be blessed? And I want to tell you something. Lord, I just want to say it. Both online and in the company of my brothers and sisters. I am blessed because, Lord, you paid the price. Yes. And, Lord, I am not perfect. And the law did not save me, but the blood of Jesus did. And thank you so much for that, Lord. And I pray that these words will go forth. And, Lord, that people will hear them, the people that need to hear them, the people that, that need to be, this needs to be wrapped around their mind, Lord, yes. to give them peace and that they can give grace to one another. Lord, the reason I can be so graceful to those folks yesterday, Lord, the reason I can embrace them and love them is not because that I'm good or they're good, it's because you're good, because you're good, Lord. And Lord, you are good. And Lord, you died so that we might have life and abundant life with you. So Lord, if you're watching at home or if you're here today or you're watching this in six months, you stumble across it somewhere, guys, I want to tell you, receive him. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm broken. My fellowship with you is broken. But Lord, you paid the price. You built a bridge to fellowship with me made out of that cross and those nails that went through your hand and your feet, oh God. And we receive and we walk across that big, that bridge and embrace the reality of Christ this morning, Lord. We love you. We give our lives to you, Lord. Let us be the men and women you've called us to be. In Christ's name I pray, amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you, let his light shine on you and give you peace.